OK, let's look at a very simple example of two-way communication. So using the same example that we had set up here already, which was our counter, let's go ahead and create a feature in this that is a reset button that will set the value of that timer in our Flash movie via our Autoplay Media Studio application without having to change our Flash movie. OK, so if that sounds complicated, just stick with me. It's actually really easy. So basically, if we preview our project as it is, press F5 to preview, what we get is this. We get this counter that just keeps going up continuously. What we're going to do is add a reset button, which when we click it, is going to restart that counter, okay? And we're not actually going to have to go back and change our flash because our flash movie is already set up perfectly the way we need it. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to add a new label object and I'm going to just set the word reset as the text. In the actions area here, in the on click event area, I'm going to go ahead and add a flash set variable action. So let's go to our add action wizard by clicking on the add action button and in the flash family of actions let's go ahead and choose the flash set flash variable action we'll double click on it and we're presented with this screen here so our object name is already set up here by default but if you had more than one flash object you would actually choose the right one from the drop down here and in the flash variable area here you'll remember that our flash variable name was called my counter so let's go ahead and set the value of that using this action in the value area I'm just going to set it to zero so basically whenever we click this reset label it's going to reset the, the value inside our flash movie of that my counter variable to zero. So let's press finish. We'll press OK. And then we'll press F5 to preview. Actually, we're going to have to move our label out a bit here. And then we can press F5 to preview. So I'll put it down here in the corner. Now you see we get, we're presented with our, our counter as it normally was. And now we have a reset button. When I click on this reset button, you'll notice that the counter restarts. And that's because we set it to set that value to zero. So this is actually pretty profound two-way communication. When you think about what we're doing, our Flash movie is sending this counter data to our Autoplay Media Studio application, where our Autoplay Media Studio label object is displaying that data for us. And then we've got a Autoplay Media Studio button set up here, the reset button, which when we click it, it's actually sending code to our Flash movie to reset that variable value to zero. Okay, so that's two-way communication. It's a very simple example. And to review, the two-way communication is that the Flash movie is sending this counter data to our Autoplay Media Studio application for display, and our Autoplay Media Studio application button, the reset button, is sending variable data back to our Flash movie to uh, basically restart the process for that timer. Okay, so that's two-way communication example. It's very basic. Again, we're starting with basic examples and we'll work our way up to some more complicated stuff as we go along. But in, e in any event, we're trying to keep it simple because we want people to understand these FS commands and start using them. Because basically, uh, Flash allows you to do certain rich content applications that simply are not available um, via other technologies, such as the web object or, or scripting and so forth. So to really maximize your user experience and to really get your clients' projects uh, where you want them to be, using Flash content is a great way. Certain tools such as Swish and uh, you know uh, some smaller tools, your Flash Studio tools and whatnot, are getting quite inexpensive. You can pick them up for forty or fifty dollars, and you can create quite compelling Flash content in very little time. And that really turbocharges your Autoplay Media Studio applications and increases your user response. Now, the basics of what we've outlined here with this two-way two -way communication is the basis that you're going to use to create. Um, whatever type of interaction you need between your Flash objects and your Autoplay Media Studio objects. Now we'll start looking at a couple examples of how we can take our Flash objects and have them communicate with other objects within our applications because the one thing that we haven't really discussed so far that's quite profound about this is that all our objects can interact freely with each other. So a Flash object can interact freely with a web browser object, a label object such as we've done here, or even a video object, or a paragraph object, and so forth. All the objects can basically communicate back and forth between each other. So now that we've established that, um, it really starts to become apparent to us that Autoplay Media Studio, just as a, fa as a Flash tool alone, as a tool to extend Flash content, is a, a very profound tool with some, some really incredible potential. So let's go ahead and move on to the next tutorial now, and we'll take a look at how our Flash object can interact with a different object other than the label object, such as we've illustrated here.